We're recording, yeah. Right, so this will do. Uh, this is our second attempt. We've uh, we've now graduated to mics each. Yeah. <laughs> and a much more stable and I think finer viewpoint of the uh, of the verge and the hard shoulder. The things that are important if you're having the full motorway return journey experience. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, uh, it's, okay. it's one of the things, isn't it? I mean, the motorway makes the journey so much faster, but driving yeah. through driving through Britain is is so thrilling. There's so much variety in in small areas compared to some other countries where it's just very samey for miles on end. You know, Britain is uh, is, is a Change. very it's Change. a lot to change. But then when you're driving down a motorway, it's, it's uh, bridges uh, and trees. I'm just going to yeah. move that down a bit because you're getting a little bit of beardage. Beardage, beard oh, beardage. Yes. Um, so, yeah. so yeah, we're we're on our return journey back. We've just yeah. been Synthfest. Uh, I'm Nick Bat. I'm Gaz Williams. And I'm Jason Jervis. I think you will have picked him up. If not, he's the guy you can't hear in the back or see. But you know, it's fine. And isn't wielding a knife? No, he's not wielding. He's a, it's like watch out! There's someone in the back of the car. Who's that? Yeah. Man. So yeah, we yeah. just got back from uh, Synthfest. Uh, we did shoot a little thing earlier. We just used the internal mics. We may use that. This is a sort of experiment because we thought, well, why don't we use, oh look, roadkill. <laughs> why don't we use um, use the journey to record something? And I have to have the 360 camera because right. I shot a 360 for the Patreoners yeah. uh, at the show. Um, and we've got still an hour left on the SD card. <laughs> so Let's don't want to waste any memory. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I mean, one of the differences, I guess, between like Machine and Bristronica and uh, and Synthfest is Synthfest is possibly more keyboardy compared to maybe uh, Machine being a bit more Euro racky. Would, would you say? Yeah, I mean, it's just sound on sound core, core audience. I mean, it's right. generally probably a little older, um, certainly more northern because obviously in Sheffield there certainly it's not always easy to get to Sheffield. Um, it's been a great show for ages. I suppose the thing that's been weird is we've had the ability to make a direct comparison. Bristronica yes. was last week, you know, so we're doing it all again this Saturday. Yeah. And they are quite different. I wonder if, uh, if I mean, the, the attendance at Bristronica was enormous. I wonder if it impacted negatively on Synthfest. I spoke to one of the organisers yesterday yep. uh, at the show and he said they did 800 advance tickets. Okay. He walked into guests, so they were probably around 1,100, wow. maybe 1,200. I okay. mean, th this is a fact packet calculation, and Bristronica pre sold 1,500 tickets? Yeah, about 1,400, yeah. 1,400, so they would have yeah. had guests, so they would have been maybe, there'd have been a few hundred more, but there were probably 30% more exhibitors, yeah. and there was more talks and artists and, you know, just yeah. that kind of thing. Footfall. Yeah. I was, uh, I was, I was running one, well, I say running. That's not true. Discussion stage. Maybe. Hamish was running the stage. I was, uh, I was kind of presenting. Uh, I, I was, I was the host. I was the host, uh, which is really great fun. But you know, unfortunately, meant that I really didn't, didn't see anything. Didn't see yeah. much. You know, normally, but to be honest, when we're when we're covering the show, so you know, uh, you only get to see small amounts anyway. Yeah, the uh, things that you film generally. Yeah. Right. Uh, so it's you know I always have to I always look forward to it as well when I you know get once the Sonic content is uploaded getting to see everything else, um, of which that's going to be happening in the next few days. Isn't there, it? Well, the stuff is coming up. In fact, I think there'll possibly be stuff uh, this by this evening. Right, and because we we were able to upload a lot of the footage from. Uh, over dinner last night. Right. <laughs> <What a> dinner. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. that gives you such a good feeling when you know your workflow, where stuff is happening while you are yeah. just feeding yourself and having a bit of a wine. Ah, that's that's a, it's a very yeah, it's excellent. So I mean, I, I don't know if there, if this would would be a a, a a thing that you could make a video of, but the evolution of the Sonic State Live Rig over the years <laughs> has gone through so many iterations, yeah. so many changes. Uh, and, and like now, you've got the lightest, simplest, uh, easiest to operate. Uh, is the Mark One still available? Is it in a museum <laughs> somewhere? We probably oh, could put it together. We've yeah. still got the original uh, old Canon HF 200s. That's right. We, we, in fact, we use we, we use them up until now. We use them as uh, caps, a couple of cameras right. on the. In fact, we did we use one? An EMOM. Uh, the EMOM, yeah. Right. But we realised they were really shit, so we've tried to replace them. But yeah, I know. I mean, and that's that's something that gives me great pleasure. The sort of the back end, the workflow, the right. the, the kind of 
you know, the, the fact that we can we can adapt whether we're networkly challenged or whether we're uh, you know there are play, there are ways and means that we can use to get footage to editors. But we've very much moved now. We used to take somebody to the the place. They'd sit in a room. We'd give them the footage. They'd edit it. Now there's absolutely no need for that. We can just send it to them by the cloud. As long as we've got a decent network connection or even good enough network connection, it'll get to them. You know, and that that greatly speeds things up. Yeah. I, and, I, uh, yeah, I mean, but this time, I suppose, we got there about 10.30, actually, we got yeah, made really good time. As you can see, the weather's fantastic. It's really, really warm, mm -hmm. actually. It was incredibly warm there yeah. as well. Um, possibly a sign of terrible things to come in the global <laughs> warning. But, you know, but, you know, hey, at least it's nice today, eh? Um, <laughs> yeah. And I think, I think the thing about the show, I mean, all of the shows, Bristronica is the same. Bristronica was a different vibe, but underlying it is the same sense of camaraderie and together community and it's really yeah. you know and because we're you know we're sort of recognizable faces for youtube or whatever you get a lot of people come up to you who've spent a lot of years in your company that you've never met right. but are, are have some, but it's sort of yeah. one-sided relationship but it's so lovely when, yeah. when you meet people and they kind of go oh i watch I, I, I have to ask them though what their what their handle is what their pseudonym uh, is because all these people, they, they, you know, you don't know if it's a man or a woman. You don't know uh, anything about them other than some kind of abstract uh, name. Oh. So a bunch of people came up to me yesterday, and they, you know, it was really nice. They introduced themselves, and then I had to find out what name that they go under, really. Um, and that's quite funny then when you, oh, so that, you know, you, uh, no one said Woody Forest, did they? No. Or <laughs> Synth Punk. No. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, They're not people that are um, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, that's what, yeah. It's good. I, I really enjoyed that. But um, but one of the, the the sort of slightly just frustrate not frustrated. It's just you know we are trying to work, yeah. and it's difficult, isn't it's it, to hard, uh, yeah. to to disconnect from the conversation because because like, people really people really want to talk to you and 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 it's really nice as well. But we also have to kind of. Yeah, I, I think I difficult. cultivate. It, I, I think people who meet me at shows maybe think that I'm um, brusque and unapproachable, which maybe I am in that situation. But it's because, like, for instance, we had, you know, uh, IK Multimedia and uh, Soma uh, someone sponsored just, that. So we have to film the right. stuff, you know. But someone got, described you as, it's like, me and you as, like, a good cop, bad cop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I've, like, seen as the, the easy. You're the bad cop, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, I suppose the thing is, I'm very conscious of the the agenda and the things we have course, to get done. When it stops, it's like, yeah, great, yeah, all yeah, good. Yeah. But, and also, I think people don't really, when you're in the zone of like, right, okay, I'm filming, I'm doing this thing, to flip into a kind of casual conversation mode and have to retrieve, right. have to retrieve uh, information from a different part of your brain, yeah. it's actually quite... Right. It's quite challenging to well, do that repeatedly. I mean, as I found yesterday, normally at these events, the great Andy Mack is with us, but sadly he couldn't be with us this time. So I was having to film my own pieces, and it's hard. <laughs> like, you're like, where's my Andy? <laughs> yeah, it is. It, you have to, but you have to focus quite hard. Because yeah. also, not only that, you've got to not break any of your equipment, not lose any of it. Remember not to walk off with it oh, plugged in. So, so it, many. Things. We're we're on the road, and we can't bring spares of everything. Now, now it's getting to the point. I mean, this was a, a road trip, so we could bring actually more stuff. Than we would normally bring to an international show. Yeah. Last yeah. Nam and Subaru, we all did with carry on only, no check luggage. Incredible. So you can't, I mean, there's just no, there's no room for, you can't bring three rigs no. and, and have spares for everything because, but, but so therefore you have to be particularly careful not to lose. But I mean, like compared to previous years, or just the, just the amount of luggage that you used to have to take, though, I mean, it, 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 the, 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 up, the flip side of it is just how. Yeah, how lighter and it's much less physically well. challenging as well. Right. Yeah, you're looking out the big. Well, camera Jason, because you were filming with the other mobile phone yeah, rig, mobile similar phone. to our small yeah, rig. Absolutely, a small rig cage, two handles, and basically a, a, a clip-on mic that works for sound cards. Right. Yeah. Like just using the inbuilt video recorder of the, the iPhone, and actually the footage is, is totally usable. The thing that's quite interesting is because for years we did sound, you know 
mixer or, or whatever it is it, uh, into a DSLR. So that would go into an analog mini jack input into the camcorder or into the DSLR. Yeah. And those are really shitty A to Ds. Yeah. So now, even though we're using a mobile phone, because we're using uh, we use Zoom uh, P4 pod, pod tracks. Yeah. I'd use, well, I'm not sure what you use, but straight, straight, you because you're going straight in digitally then into the phone, the sound quality of it is so much better than it ever used to be. The dynamic range, the frequency response, the noise floor, yeah. all of it makes a difference. And we use also use headset cardioid mics, which we plug into these things, these uh, roads, and they reject, I mean, it's like, you're in a, it's a very, very different audio experience uh, for the for the viewer. Hopefully, we'll have to see. Well, I, I mean, I I use that old method, so we'll have to see. Although, uh, in the most, I have got, I did record the audio. Yeah, well, you can separately. Could, you could fiddle it, but, uh, but but in a way, they see that's quite interesting, isn't it? The way I'm going to have to do it is kind of a fairly laborious. I'm going to have to create Final Cut projects bring all of the things in, synchronize them up, all that kind of stuff. Whereas now you will, yeah, now you've got you, you've got that method down where essentially you, you shoot and virtually send it up. Yeah. And that is, you know, as I mentioned, after years of iterations and changes, trying to, you know, fine tune and dial that set, set up, up to be as efficient as possible. Um, yeah, there's a lot of automation and programming stuff that goes yeah. behind the scenes to run the back end. But yeah, yeah. And so Andy's yeah. been, while while Andy has not been here, last night and this morning, he's edited most of my stuff and most of it's been uploaded. Uh, Chris from Battery Upgrade Orchestra will be putting the stories together. So probably oh, by this nice. evening, I will be able to publish a whole bunch of those. So, by, you know, yeah. I'll have some family duties and things to take care of when I get home. So, I mean, back to the show itself, um, same format, so the big octagon room with, I think, were there more people there this year, exhibitors? It felt a bit heavily populated. And then downstairs was uh, Yamaha, the big, the big, the big Core, players. and uh, Source, Source Audio, Distribution. Yeah, with uh, Arturia. So every time I went to Source, Source Distribution to try and film something, mm. there was somebody on the stage doing a talk, so I nah. couldn't I couldn't be going, so tell, you know, there, I, there was no... Nah. So it's an interesting, I mean, dynamically, for, certainly for media, that didn't necessarily work. Okay. But we weren't, there's no green room this year. Previously, we've had the green oh, yeah. room. Yeah, that's great. And Ooh. apparently there was an incident last year. Do we, do we, we, nobody we knows don't. what it is. Ooh, the incident. The incident. <laughs> we we immediately <laughs> thought it must have been something we did. I know. <laughs> I, I did kind of raid the kind of hospitality fridge a little bit. At the end of the day, that was. No, we were told. Well, they said, help yourselves. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All so right, yeah. Just, okay. So I did bump into Graham Massey from 808 State. Yeah. And I said, you were there last time, weren't you? Yeah. Do, do you know what the incident was? And he said, no, I, don't, I have no idea. Mm. But incidentally, yeah, yeah, Graham Massey, uh, 808 State, he, I was cool. to him, he was really interested in the Kodamo mask, which I did a review on, ah. that kind of French keyboard. The, yeah. the one that's actually quite expensive with a very yeah. willfully obscure UI. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but it does sound rather lovely, I must admit. It's a, what's peculiar, uh, so, you know, that, 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 Going into that type of, 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 of interface that was the interface that we were most glad to be rid of. Yeah, and they brought it back. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I mean, Roland, when they brought out the JD800 back, when was it, 1990? Maybe. Right, okay. Um, that was a return to hands-on knobs and faders, really, wasn't it? You know, from those oh, kind also, of... But yeah, no, it was a knobs and faders and a ton of menu diving. So it's both. The right. the best of all right. the... Certainly both worlds. The I mean, I mentioned that with the Kodomo, though. There's, like, very, very little... Yeah, and it's a three-digit or four-digit LED display. It's not big, is it? It's very... I didn't nice. see... Was there... Was, was Kiviak Instruments there with their... With, with I their don't recall. Wolfie, Wolfie, the Wolfie. I'm not sure if they were or not. What a brilliant, really fun. I mean, I can't wait to see that when it's out and finished. Uh, but Cold Mode, they make that a really interesting FM synth, don't they? Yes, I can't remember what it's called. Essence or something? Oh, no, Essence FM, is it? I might be wrong. Yeah, I'm not sure. But, um, I don't remember. Yeah, uh, so I've been playing uh, my current sort of new synth is the Vector synth. I did a live stream about it on my show last Wednesday. I'm going to return to it more. Just, uh, I, I, know could, you, I couldn't get on with it. I really many couldn't people, get on with it. Many people can't. I, what, so tell me about it. What, what, was, what, did you, what, what could you not get on with? 
trying to remember now. I think the fact was the way that the voices are split up. Yes. Just being able to kind of route something through a filter and then tweak the filter, just that basic thing, yeah. was it, was really not very intuitive. In, well, it's, to be honest, though, it really is trying to get away from that. Uh, you know, so, but, but, but I mean, you know, I, I think they've made very, dis, very distinct uh, design decisions to make the, uh, well, to make the end result unique. And I do have to say that it really does sound um, unlike any of the other synths that I've got. I think it's a, um, I think it's a, well, like an example now. So you've got, you've got the four corners and then obviously the vector aspect is how uh, you have the playhead yeah. and how the playhead moves around the vectors. So, you know, you could set up Two, like the upper two corners to be ostensibly the same, but, it's a, a, but with one yeah. with a filter closed and one with the filter open. Yes, but that's incredibly fiddly. Yeah, but, but and also it wasn't just that; it's the way that you. Uh, it's, it's been a while, but I just remember yeah. thinking, okay, yeah, I've seen much the same thing. Yes, I just mm. do that, but then it's like, oh no, because this voice is in this mode, it means I can't use that filter. <laughs> that filter's over. The, it, it was just yeah, very okay. I a mean, little bit. Uh, convoluted. Well, I mean, what are we on now? I think the sort of two point. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it's improved massively. Yeah. Yeah. So um, they've had a very uh, active forum, uh, uh, or rather, the developers have been very active on the forum, responding to. Uh, and in fact, they've done really well in that in that way of of being very responsive to the customers, uh, and subsequently, you know it. You know, it's 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 developed. Sure, I know, that's great. And then, so what I did on my show, I thought was quite interesting, was exploring the new MPE capabilities of ah, it. Okay. And I think that that's now that's since nice. I think that really I really do because one of the things that's quite you know different about the vector is that um, the way that the playhead moves around, you can have them that you can have them all every note that you play all start again or each voice trigger options or each voice though can move independently across the vectors as well so when you do that and then if you map um well so you've got the suborbiter that orbits yeah. around the uh, around the pad so if you map like an mpe like in the case i was using the keith mcmillan q nexus and using the y-axis so like they call it the tilt controls right. basically pushing up and down uh, then what that would do is, as I push up, it would br it would make the um, it would make the orbiter wider. So it was slower. Oh no no and I no and no I do that with um, poly with poly pressure right, then. Right. And then what happens is each voice then takes on all this extra animation each voice. And but I, you know animo. Yeah. I, I suppose, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not similarities. I, I think the thing is, is all of that is great, but for me, it just felt a little too. There was too much friction to get to that stage. It was, it was. It's quite a lot of investment of time to make a patch do something, and sometimes you're driven. To, you're driven by how it looks rather than how it sounds with that interface. Sometimes I found. Yeah. But well, you know, okay. it, it sounds good. I, well, but yes, they weren't there. I suppose is the is the short <laughs> answer to that question. But yeah. Okay. But yeah. Okay. I was just yeah. Sorry to be back on point there. I was. Uh, um, but yeah. I mean, it, uh, we mentioned earlier on the earlier video, um, like I was talking about the play fader uh, as a. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is our turning. This is our turning. We have to we all have to focus now because that would be. That wouldn't be good. Distressing. <laughs> uh, but this is what I was going to ask you about now. So, talking about interface, I was mentioned about the vector there that has a unique interface. What did you see then, like either at this show or previous show, that uh, that was, you know, that had some sort of interesting interface size of things? I mean, well, I mean, play yeah. fader, obviously. Play fader, uh, I think yeah. the obvious one. Uh, and that's again, that was only a marginal tweak to things that already exist, but just somehow seems to go, oh yeah, that's the pocket. Um, yeah. I didn't see the glyphs, but I've heard that's quite a nice interface. Um, Ristronica, what did I? The finger drum, the Yamaha finger drum, yeah, okay, which, which are one we spoke about earlier. Yeah. 
Uh, that, for me, figured that was a product of the show just because it's got so many little sweet spots and it's it's very playable and enjoyable i think you were very and it, yeah it's easy it's it's a bit you might look at it and go oh it's just like you know yamaha djx or something but actually yeah, it's fun. quite good it's, i wonder if we're going to see really great players years and years ago <laughs> a jeremy what was he called he, he a jeremy, hayes jeremy hayes and he was david no, 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 david, hayes, david hayes david hayes yeah and then jeremy the Haymaker. No, that's a boxer, isn't yeah, it? No. Yeah, so Jeremy Hayes. And he, he used to play the old HR, like Elise's HR, HR 16. 16. Yeah, that's and, right. And that's it, I, I had Piets, but it had, actually had Piets's uh, little microphones in it, didn't it? So that's how that's how the triggering worked on it. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, so it, you know. God, yeah, I remember David, David. Fingers, it, fingers, fingers Hayes. Fingers Hayes, yeah. yeah. He used to be one of those booths that you, one yeah. of those people that you'd see playing on uh, on somebody's booth somewhere yeah. as a draw, you know, like you now get. Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, Je Jeremy, I don't remember his name. He, oh, he yes. Was a, the machine, he was fantastic. Yes, uh, yes I Finger drummer him. with machine. Um, yeah, I don't remember his name, but Jeremy, yeah, Jeremy <sighs> was his first name. Yeah, so. He was really good. Fantastic. So, yeah, so I wonder if that Yamaha will, I mean, I'm almost Sport certain it's going to happen, that, 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 that some people's talent, it will just fire some people's talents and we'll see Incredible virtuosos on them. Well, I just when I plug one of the headphones in, well, the headphones, all I do is just wipe my hand over it and immediately got some really pleasing sounds. It's just like, um, it's just mad. Oh, oh it's, it, it, yeah. it's Ooh, traffic. I'm, yeah, I'm we're, the window a second. We got three <laughs> miles, three miles, uh, three mile uh, uh, tri So, oh. this is you can also yeah. enjoy some of the uh, less fine points of uh, <laughs> transportation. At least there was no train strike. Right? The one thing about Bristronica last week, there was a train strike, and actually last year for uh, for this show, there was a train strike. And people people bottled it. People were leaving at two o'clock, um, one o'clock, because they were just so worried about getting back to wherever. And, and in fact, the MyVolts people left because they had to get a train and then a and then a plane to Dublin. You know, it was pretty. People had to cancel as well. I know that um, Alina from Sound Creek Module was supposed to be there. She was over in. She came over from Italy. Oh um, yeah, just stuck in London. Not leave London, so uh, she absolutely uh, prepared to do, uh, or perhaps in gutted, you know. Like that's awful, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. Am I just a little check? Am I in the way of the rear view gas? No, no, it's all good. I got those. It's just a little more comfortable. No, no, oh, okay. it's all good. No, I got the wing yeah, mirrors. You're there as well. Yeah. I got the wing mirrors. You're still the like... you're still the dark cousin. <laughs> you're still the creepy fucker in the back. But... <laughs> Oops. Bleep. Sorry. NSW, NSFW. <laughs> Yeah, is that is that is it worth with this thing still going that? Or I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it makes all that much because what I did is I changed because the light is now coming in and I I've I've, I'm in a bit I've made it a bit more exposed anyway. So this is all new. So we're using an Insta 360X here, which is something that we've started using. You might have seen we did uh, some footage from the Emoms, which I would heartily recommend if you haven't checked out. It's really good actually. Mm. I think so, anyway. I mean, oh, are they adjustable for the end yeah, user? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just a, a raw 360. So what I had to spend ages... The, the only problem is, is this stuff is a nightmare to edit. And it takes... It renders out yeah. at, at, like, three frames a second. Wow. It's ridiculous. Good to see Jim Glue at the show uh, yeah. at, uh, yesterday. He's everywhere. Yeah. He's everywhere. But I have to say, I was really impressed with his performance oh, at, the, at the Sonic mm -hmm. EMOM. Yeah. It was such a confident and, uh, yeah. you know... It's musical. Got, Really, really good. And, you know, it's uh, a range of things. I think, in fact, the last theme on, I think musically, I think it was made really hung together. It was really yeah. good, yeah. Of course, food. Thinly, yeah, yeah. It was a fantastic performer. Um, what is the temperature in here? It is really bloody 18 hot. degrees. That's not 18 hot. degrees. <laughs> I've got a black t shirt on and the sun is blasting onto my torso. Well, while we slow down and open the windows again, so we can get some air through the place, because I think, I think, I think the mics can handle it. I think so too. Is there any way, Nick, on Sonic, to plug the Wavetable gig this next week in Edinburgh at all? Um, uh, is that, is that, when is it? It's on Thursday. Well, I could do, obviously we could do it on Sonic Tour, but it's probably yeah. a bit late then. Um, I mean, is there a press release or anything? Is, uh, get get us to send it to me, and I'll. I mean, it's going to be a bit buried because we're going to be oh, posting 30, yeah, yeah, yeah. 30 things, but I, we could tweet it okay. and Facebook it. That, Just send, be send me the stuff so yeah, I can uh, be reminded. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is working. I'm just... Well, I keep looking at my phone. It's not because I'm bored. It's just I'm checking the actual 
what's coming out of the camera. I mean, it, it's it's quite. Yeah, it seems all right. Have you had any thoughts about returning to live, Nick, doing live performances? Did um, you could perform at one of the EMOMs? No, I, ha I I couldn't add that to the task of stuff that oh, has to be done. Oh, you've got I too much on I your could, plate. I couldn't. You did do that in the very first one, didn't you? Yeah, I know it was pretty heavy going. Yeah. Good stat, though. Yeah. Um, I think... Maybe it would be about maybe. performing at another event where you're not going to do anything maybe else. Maybe performing something that, that wasn't based on my previous thing, because I'd have to basically build it all uh, back it together complex. again, try and remember how it all went. Mind you, if I'm honest, Nick, when you just play a synth just on its own... That's what I was thinking, maybe just doing, you know, just a looper Cosmos. and a massive reverb. <laughs> Yeah. Have, you got a, a, have you got the Cosmos? I yeah. have, yeah. So Cosmos and Osmos. Cosmos. 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 <laughs> Sounds like Osmos. a disease. Os it's yeah. a disease that hamsters Osmos. get. Osmos. It, mar Osmos. it morphs from rabbits. Oh, Cosmos. <laughs> Osmos. Cosmos. Osmos. Cosmos. Cosmos. It's, it's, it's the Cosmos. Osmos. Cosmos. 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 I don't know. I don't think I'd use the... Because I think... Yeah. Well, I suppose you could use the Osmosis. Have you still got the... Osmos, even. Um, the um, Soma Terra. No, that's going back. That's going back. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, in fact, I was supposed to send that to Starsky uh, car some time ago. And I, did I, you see him yesterday? I, he I, should have, I, would have, I should have bought it up. Yeah, I, now, it duh, that was, now I've got to pack yeah. it up. So send it to him. Postage. Fans as well. Alex Ball there yesterday as yeah, well. Yeah, nice to see him. Yeah, so... There's a lot less of him these days, isn't there? Gosh, He's, yeah. He looks... He's himself thin. He looks a little bit like a... Um, a triathlete these he days. Does, yeah. I bet he could do a lot of that as well. It's quite fit with it. Yeah. Running and he's it's all the shame. He's an astonishing talent, that Alex really Ball. Is. He really is. He's uh, completely smoked me, I think, in the in the bad gear. Oh, this yeah, is the head to head. Insanely hot. Yeah, I well, can see what the just the twenty five degrees. Yeah, That's go. shit. Twenty five degrees. It's the eighth of October. Yeah. What the hell? Doesn't make any sense, does it? Yeah, we're all dead. We're all we're all doomed. We <laughs> this is doomed. it. These trees oh, are just going to start spontaneously combusting in a minute. Yeah. Alex Ball worked in advertising, I think. Yes. Today. So he was having to do lots and lots of music all the time on I, those very short. I had a chat with him about because he was talking. We were right. talking as we do. You know, we get together us us YouTubers and sort of go, well, how, you know, what. And he he said I worked in advertising. So when people come to me say, do you want to do a video on my thing? I'll just shut that. He can he can talk them back and go okay yeah well, let's talk concepts creatives uh, budgets all that and they're all like oh well didn't think you actually knew you know you yeah. you knew that sort of stuff because he know you know he's, yeah. he's worked in marketing and advertising for years right yeah that, you know and having yeah and having to turn stuff around very quickly and to a standard not just quickly but to a standard yeah high standards yeah. yeah so um, but I mean he's been making some excellent contributions to history you know to the historical yeah the synth yeah, history and uh, right, yeah you know so it's really I think informative yeah, and actually I think they call that infotainment infotainment, infotainment. <laughs> but you know I think that sort of thing is just so important isn't it I mean um, I wonder this is here we go here's a here's a, here's a, a when things go up on YouTube how long in the future do you think they're still going to be accessible I mean, is that is it for per per perpetuity? Is well, it I mean, there's nothing forever. I mean, you know, right. Google could be split apart by you know the some sort of uh, government or body in the US, and YouTube could end up being with somebody else that ends up being whatever. The data is duplicated so many times on so many servers all over the world. Yeah. So I mean, is and is that data? It's just quite curious, isn't it? Because it's sort of like now YouTube did it launch in two thousand five. 30 minutes of SD card left. And also, this is going to be in the sun. It might actually shut down because it's going to be so absolutely hot. boiling. We're hot. It's we're, hot. Yeah. This, yeah is, just, this is a bit like how hot it was at Emon. Can we just say what we're doing just to bring you this entertainment is forfeiting the, uh, the air conditioning. Well, actually, now we've got the mics on. Maybe we could turn the air conditioning on. Let's try it. Please. We can always isotope our exit. I'll put a marker in for that. That's when the air conditioning went on. <laughs> Suddenly, everyone stopped looking for hot and sweaty. It's like big grumpy. Just bang it. Let's have it. Out. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Like, oh. Like uh, <laughs> oh, man. Out. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's, okay. it. getting, getting, getting. it's all right. It's, oh, yeah, there we go. There go. Oh, that's better. There you go. 
I think it's going to be pushing air across the mic, so. I don't care. You don't care. I'm not sorry. Suffer- I'm not suffering anymore. I didn't bring the little wind things. Actually, I lose. I always lose that sort of stuff. Andy has to buy spares of all the things, like magnets that go on the back of these. Yeah. Wind fluffy things. Yeah, I. I don't always remember. Just yeah. Bridge. It's a bridge. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, nice. Thank you. That, I mean, it's improving. It's still mighty warm. And I don't know if it's going to affect that very much, but... So now, the the year is starting... Um, if we think about it, like, now it's back into its normal slot yeah. in January. Well, it was late January, fortunately, not right. rather than right. mid-January, yeah. Right. Uh, that, that's where NAM belongs, at the beginning of the year. Yeah. It, it feels kind of... They've got a lot of repair and uh, maintenance to do to bring the same level of... Because a lot... I mean, we're talking to... To people there, lots of people aren't going to be going from the synth world. I mean, it'll still be, it was quite big last year, and it'll probably be as big, if not a little bigger. But I think just the well, focus of the what will be displayed there will change. Things have changed in, you know, obviously the pandemic has, yeah. has been different and a lot more online content perhaps being created. But also, well, certainly within our, our community, many more things like Bristronica, like Synth East. Synth East yeah, is taking part, taking. Synthese, the next synthese is going to be in February this Just year. Like the, uh, the next one. Yeah, slightly earlier. It was yeah. in March, I think, uh, last time. But um, could be a frosty drive. <laughs> so it's a long, a long wait. But uh, this year's event was really great, and um, and was and was sold out, which was really good to see. And lots of people getting really first hands on stuff. Uh, and. It, that had a really great buzz around it. It was a really positive and very, um, yeah, very successful event. And Robin, Robin Vincent, Molten Music, Robin. Uh, it was, you know, he, yeah, he did a terrific job. Electronic Sound, the magazine, helped out. They're based in not in Norwich, okay. um, and it takes place in. Uh, yeah, oh, that's, that's, well, yeah, that's concourse, isn't it? Beautiful. As well, yeah, well looked after. Well. It's been turtled, turtle it's, waxed recently. It's, it's, it's lucky. <laughs> Someone just buffed out this morning before they went for a, a drive. Amazing. Yeah, so, um, Synth East, uh, yeah, in February. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, I think it's a really nice event. Uh, there was uh, a good I event. I don't think I'm going to have a go. It's going to, it's going to be so close to NAM now. It will be it's NAM a, It's 25th. a month after NAM. Okay. So, well, when in February? End of February? Towards, yeah, the end of February. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, end of February. Oh, two perfect with my parents. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is, you know, um, Norwich, Norwich is in that. Norwich is is in the arse end. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not. It, I'm not saying it's backwater, but it's no. because it's so far east. It's yeah. not sort of on the route to anywhere. You have to That's go right. there. That's we right. went to the Oldborough Festival, which was Ipswich. So, so in the, it took six hours. It's a long way. It's a long way. That's for sure. Um, it's a lovely city, Norwich, though, and it really does yeah. have a very laid back. Uh, it's the feel. quiz of the week. <laughs> <laughs> but I, the point I was making there, though, is like how things are changing, and maybe how this possibly impacts on NAM. Yeah. You know, you've got the smaller various niche events, yeah. smaller niche events. Uh, I mean, Nopcon, in LA, you know, uh, Synth. Is, it, is that oh, that's in, that's in Fest as well, isn't it? Is no, it synth- there's a Synth Fest in France, isn't Nop- there? Nop- but, um, Nopcon, Nopcon, there's another one. Synth- in- I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember either. No, that's it's terrible. No, it's not. It's the one run by uh, Mike. Uh, I can't remember. Okay, we'll come back to it. Yeah, we'll but um, obviously, Super Booth, but no music messer these days. Super Booth um, certainly moved from being at Music Messer into its own event. So, yeah. so seeing that kind of breakaway, that kind of more focused niche event, is probably better for the end user, certainly better for. Uh, the coverage for like Sonic, for instance, isn't it? Having these. Well, there's a, there is a, one major difference to this, and that is all of those events are public. NAM is trade only, oh. and always has been trade only. Or some, that's what it's supposed to be. The National Association, yeah, music. Um, um, I can't remember manufacturers. So yeah, I'm not quite sure, but it's originally the idea of NAM was for all the stores and yeah. the distributors to be able to come together and do their deals and see the gear. And right. obviously it was, it was in California where lots of the big wigs were. Awesome. There was lots, you know, the guitar stuff was obviously massive. Rock and roll city, you know, yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah. And now 
it, and it's the same thing, but it's very different. So our job when we go there is much more about amplifying the stuff that is displayed because the public can't see it. Yeah. There. And that's why it was always a big show. So, but in the heyday, we would do a NAM show, we film, I don't know, 80, 90 videos. By the time the next NAM came around, we're talking a million views wow. on those videos. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's a big chunk of, you know, that's a lot of, yeah. obviously it's a lot of stuff. I mean, not everything would get hundreds of thousands of views, you know, quite a lot, you know, a hundred videos, some would get yeah. 10, some would get three, some would get ah. 50, you know, so yeah. it really depends on the... So, this, this leads us into an interesting area then. So, from Bristronica, what was the most popular video? Was it the Super Gemini? Oh, um, I, I could look it up. Uh, and then it'll be interesting to see which will be the most popular video from Synfest, so we could maybe speculate about that. Um, Let me see. A lot of some kind of the same sort of stuff exhibited at both, right? And then some differences. <laughs> I mean, you know, the guy that does all the synth panel uh, making, you know, the Sweep the Street. Yes. Yeah, it's brilliant. I love, he did a, he had a top plate of a Juno 60 sprayed up with the same colours as the 909. Yeah. It just looked brilliant. I just thought, yeah, oh, actually, yeah, I had a, a Juno 60 just so I could buy that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so those kind of, he wasn't that machine, I don't think. Okay, interesting. Uh, kind of like ready for scores on the doors? Scores. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So I think the top one, mm -hmm. which doesn't surprise me, was the Ericsson's Bullfrog. Yeah. Ah, because really nobody'd good. seen that. Nobody's seen that. Yeah. It's the first chance we had. Really to good video as well. And again, he, Gertz gives that insight in that he was a teacher, a physics teacher, and the concept of education is very, very important to him. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, play all day fader. Up there, oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. Let's see. Oh yeah, Udo. No, sorry. U I scrub that. Udo at the top. Right. Then, then Eric Synths. Right. Then Play Fader. Then let's have a look. Uh, Kiviak did pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and then the rest all much for muchness. Yeah. Interesting. The worst performing video. Do we <laughs> want to do that, or is that a little oh, bit like the shame? Oh, shame. Maybe just in car, so our that's reactions really to it. Surprising. That's surprising. No. The Arkea Hopper, which was that, it was like the deep, the motion control. I thought that was pretty nifty, actually. I'm surprised it well, did. But I suppose it's hard to make a poster frame for that, though. Right. Maybe there that's probably it. Yeah. Maybe it's my fault. Isn't it interesting though how Udo, you know, they when the super when, super, when the Super Six debuted at at, uh, at Super, super Boo, Boo, team. was an instant runaway hit. It was. As George was telling you, the paint was still wet. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the desktop following on was a, a logical follow-up to the yeah. Super 6. And then, don't you think that the Super Gemini is exactly the product that they should be making? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 You, you know, in, in, terms of, right? in terms of what George has established yeah. so far. Well, and what we what we also established, which is really interesting, you know, because he was, I asked him how much it was, and he was concerned that it might be too much synth, you know, and perhaps a bit rich for many people. Yeah. And it certainly isn't a, a cheap instrument, you know. Or, I yeah. would say well, it's not; it's never going to be cheap, but no. it's not. It doesn't. It, it doesn't feel like it's uh, um, excessive. Excessive. Yeah. And so, lots of comments on that first video that yeah. I shot from Superboo, which well, that was probably the biggest bit, that video from Superboo, was. Wow, that's actually much less expensive than I thought right. it was going to be. Yeah. And so, I guess as a manufacturer who's got you, a part of you's thinking, "Gosh, I should have charged more." A part of you's thinking, <laughs> "I got that right, and I still I was think, able to do it." You know? I think getting it right. I think getting it. I think it's. I think yeah. it's so sweet. I think it's. I mean, what is it? It's about three and a half thousand euros or pounds. Yeah. But so compare that to some of the sort of the, the bigger synths, you know, the mode stuff that you know behind the, the, the sequential. I mean, you know, you get the, you get a much more boutique instrument really than you get. I think what's really good, though, I think, in, in you know, the, like the Super 6, which is in pride of place in my studio, yeah. I, I, it, it, it's the gift that keeps giving in terms of it. There's it, loads of sweet spots in it, aren't there? Yeah. It, it's really hard to make it sound bad. Um, and I'm good at making things sound bad. <laughs> um, There's a video. <laughs> that, that sense, that you could do the shocked face on the poster frame. I can't believe how bad I could make this sound. <laughs> so it's, it takes bad gear to a whole new level without having to worry about the production values and all yeah. the hassle of editing all those memes in. Yeah, exactly. 
you just basically make a really crappy patch and go, ooh, on the poster frame. You could probably get Bo Beach to do the poster frame for you. <laughs> Invite him to guest on it, then yeah, you, yeah you, you, you'll win. That'll be your biggest video of the year, I guarantee it. I'm sure it will, yeah. Um, Put a cat in it as well. <laughs> yeah. But, but, but just returning back to the, say, the Super Gemini, um, I, I, I shot a video for uh, for George over a new dog a couple of weeks ago, and I got to spend some quality time in a, in a nice, quiet room, and um, I've been, you know, pretty familiar with the Super 6. It, you're instantly on you're there, right. you're there, home territory, and it's, you know, it's almost like two Super 6s yeah. in a way. Two Super 5s. <laughs> yeah, two, yeah. But um, I think it's really good when a synth manufacturer doesn't overstretch or be too ambitious, keeps within a certain... The challenge sensible. must be, you know, I mean, the pressure to come up with yeah. the next big thing every time. Yeah. I mean, it's t I mean, obviously some manufacturers don't don't take that on board. I mean, Roland had famously well, developed yeah. a lot of technology and then pimp it out to, to the nth degree. Uh, but that's always been their way. There's nothing wrong right. with that. It's a business model and it clearly works for them. You know, the Gaia 2 video that we did, I was, I mm -hmm. thought, how will that go down? It, you know, big video from last, from last couple of weeks. Good product, I've got to be honest. You know, I think it's... I think I, I, yeah. I'm just thinking so, it's sort of a bit like when they did the J, the Jupiter 50, you know, and it was like, well, you can't really call that a Jupiter. It's not. And I yeah, think this is Gaia is not really a Gaia, though, because it's not, it's not holy timbrel for starters. Right. It's. I mean, I don't see it having pretty much any reason to call it a Gaia 2. It's, it's got nothing to do with the original Gaia. If they'd have, for me, what I'd have loved to have seen is the, I love, like I mentioned in the comments on Sonic the other day, I love the interface of the original Gaia. Yes, it was essentially a glorified rompler, but with an absolutely perfect, in my opinion, interface. I love the way that you can do the three layers and you can- It's very similar to the sledge, isn't it, in a way? Yeah. There's something sledge-like about it. Yeah, yeah. Just good interface yeah not maybe the best sound engine but no. the three layers it was a genius it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. almost matrix editing but yes but much more straightforward now and they carried that very same principle across onto the jdxa and then the jdxa is one of those kind of synths that yeah. they made so many mistakes with it's a real shame because in plastic there, being one of them. yeah, <laughs> that's probably. <laughs> the I think the aesthetics of it is probably the the, the main thing of it. Sounds great, but oh my god! Well, yeah. also there's something wrong with the gain staging on the analog filter. Oh, that's right. So I, I don't know if it got fixed in a revision, but mm -hmm. so you could just you had to turn the oscillators down so far to stop it from crunching really badly into the analog filter that. You had to introduce all this self noise because then you have to crank yeah. the output really far up. I, I and then you change patches and your speakers would blow up. Oh. You know, it was just. I, I genuinely think they tried to. They were, you know, they they were, they really didn't want to go back into analog in any way. They really didn't. So they so, did a really bad job. So they did a really bad job. I feel it was. I feel it was really wasn't begrudging. A, a begrudging. Yeah. I think it begrudging was. Begrudging analog. Begrudging analog. The work experience boy making a first cup of tea in his session of the week. I love, but where's the System 8, you know? System you know, 8, when you could argue I love the, system, the system, yeah. system 8. The System 8 is a really good I synthesizer. I think it's a classic. I think it's a modern classic. Yeah, yes. and it's weird because I remember reviewing it at the time thinking, you know, it's not got this, it's not got that. But you know what? Yeah. It's got a thing. Yeah, I think it sounds great. And I don't care, I don't even care less about all the plug outs. I think the instrument itself. Yeah, me too. But just, then I'm a big fan of the System 1. And I love that shallow key bed that was much hated by people. The, the classic Edderall vibe. Yeah. Because yeah, you can sort of run easy. your finger. You can run your finger almost like a stylophone um, or, you know, or, or a touch, a touch in my face. Yeah, micro Or even that sort of Has it really only been 15 minutes we've been talking? That's yeah. It feels like so much longer. Well, I think we're on, we're on, we're on form here. I think it's because also because of the uh, I am air conditioning. Hot, okay. yeah, I, so. I thought we had the I, air conditioning. It feels like it's no, just not, not it's not happening. There's nothing happening. Oh, air, 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 air conditioning off. Is it off? Oh. It was off, it's auto off. off. It's really humid and hot in here. Yeah, it is. I think the air conditioning is... Yeah, well, it went in my car. It did just go, yeah, and then it's, it's like... It re -gas yeah, re no. yeah, but, you know... Is that what you need to do? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you have to go in re-gas. Yeah. It's expensive. It's requirement that acquisition syndrome. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh,
Excellent. I think I might leave that off then. I don't just think it's put it, put it on as cold as it goes. That is Maybe as cold as it goes. Is it up cold? There's no, there's no air moving, is there? It's on full. I can't feel anything. Yeah. No, it's just feel. I feel like I'm inside a green hatch. Look, yeah. the windows are starting to steam up. Steam up. It's a window. Oh, it's weird, isn't it? Uh, what we might—I mean, just in the nature of actual survival—yes, yeah, we right, might have to. We might have to crack the windows open, and, and, and so but from this, if from this point on the video becomes unusable, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but we really we need, need some need air in here. It's pretty it's unpleasant. Yeah, I, I'm back to the knees. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Yes. oh. that'll probably be the poster frame, right? <laughs> 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 synth nerds in a car. Yeah, that's like getting sweaty. <laughs> sweaty synth nerds. Release face. <laughs> they like the sound like that. So, what's next? Next show uh, is <laughs> Nam, isn't it? Uh, yes. Last, anyway, I think. I, I don't think there's one. Yeah. It's in the east in February. I'm still figuring out whether Nam is going to be a thing for us. I mean, right. just a bit of behind the scenes action. You know, it cost us a lot of money to go to Nam. So wow, yeah. I need to raise. I need to raise, I need to get people in place for the big sponsorship packages to make it viable. Otherwise, I, I, there's no way I'm going to go and lose money. I just can't. Well, I wonder then whether it is, with Nam though, the, the fact that you've got all the pro audio there, yeah. you've, you've got all these other things that there is a crossover into, you know. Because uh, yeah, we did a lot of pro audio stuff last year. Right. And we, you know, we did pretty well last year in terms of being able to raise sponsorship. Mm -hmm. uh, Spectrasonics very kindly uh, took one of the pre-rolls and they weren't there but, and I often wonder why wow. people don't do that it's like I'm not going so I'm saving myself I don't know 100 keeps, grand so why not keeps, uh, keeps spend a fraction of that on, um, yeah. on some yeah because oh, yeah. people go oh, no we're not being there this year and you think well that, then surely that makes more sense to advertise does it not but hey, yeah. maybe just me I saw a really kind of snarky comment aimed at Spectrasonics recently online where it was suggesting that uh, it was following uh, maybe the layoffs of Moog, I think it was. I think Eric maybe shared something in sympathy with the people who'd been uh, let go um, and to do. And then and a person sort of was chiming in, going, "Well, it, you know, you're you're partly to blame by Ooh. making software instruments." Oh, for goodness' sake! Right. <laughs> you can't use and that it was what? Your software yeah. Software. And it's also, and it was aiming, it was aiming at Spectrasonics, and, and I was thinking, well, actually, no, you know, the way, certainly Omnisphere taking on the, you know, the hardware integration and you know, Well, let's blame anybody who makes anything that competes with Moog at all, shall we? <laughs> yeah. Let's blame Artoria, let's yeah. blame everybody, because, you know, that's a really yeah. spurious argument. No, it was totally, but it did actually make me think about just how incredible Spectrasonics has, have been. Uh, 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 in terms well, it's, of... But what I also find really interesting about Spectrasonics is they do not release many products. Oh. They are living on... Yeah. Um, uh, what's the... Omnis Omnis Omnisphere. Omnisphere, and Keyscape. The Keyscape, yeah, which and, are... Yeah. You know, they, they've they somehow managed to make yeah. that live Trillion, and last. The, and yeah, the, the, I mean, the those are 15 years old, 10, 15 Omnisphere years old. now is 15 years. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it is. I mean, it's, a te it's impressive that they've been able to keep it, that whole... Yeah. And they've obviously got budget. They make amazingly expensive performance videos. Well. They, yeah. they, you know, when they do do NAM, they're yeah. like the, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars spent on stuff. I mean, it's, a, yeah. it's, a, it's amazing that there's a market. You know, it makes you sort of think. Well, yes. maybe, maybe the market's bigger than you think. You know, it's a really good point. Yeah. It's hard to gauge, isn't it? So the native instruments, the whole thing now with native instruments. That's a that's a kind of curious thing, isn't it? Sort of in that. Um, what was it called first? They all sound wave. Sound, sound, yeah, sound wave was yeah, and now and now maybe the marketing people went that that was that native instruments calling all part of native instruments makes more marketing sense. Um, yeah, that was a very poor idea. I think right because it's like who's that? Yeah, yeah, but native instruments maybe that makes more sense. But I mean, it's going to be interesting to see like. Um, you know, native instruments were, for many years, you know, maybe alongside Spectrasonics, um, the leading providers of soft synths. Sample-based uh, instruments as well. Yeah, sample -based I mean, instruments. So, native instruments, I think much of their initial success uh, was DJ software, but also uh, contact. 
because right. all those contact instruments yeah. that are released as stand standalones, yes, uh, the people who make them pay a license fee to compile yeah. the uh, the contact documents into a playable player, right. and that made a lot, a lot, a lot of money over the years, and it's and, and now obviously you know you've got people like Splitfire, UVI, people who've got their own sample playback engines. And what, it, if, they, if their yeah. business is making these things, it's like, well, if I have to pay, I don't know what the fees are or anything. Right. They, they're just like, no, there's and, no point. And that's what you really singled out with, with our look at um, uh, 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 Halion, uh, the Halion sampler, yeah. Yeah. with the fact that you can make standalone instruments out of it that you can then Sell. sell, yeah. I mean, I don't know how. Which popular. none of us have. <laughs> right. We use we use decent sampler. Yeah, that's quite good. A decent it? sampler is getting more and more and more complex. I mean, what you can make some quite amazing uh, interfaces. I know that. Um, oh, what's his name? Uh, the guy who's friends with Ben Jordan, uh, Venus Theory. Oh yeah. He does a load of stuff you can buy on the on the on the decent sampler, and his interfaces are really advanced. I mean, I'd like to do more of that stuff and release samples to the Patreon people and just build some really interesting things because they're, they're pretty, you can do some pretty good stuff with it. And, it, and it's all free. It's all just XML, it's text. <laughs> well, that, that makes me think about um, Kiviak and the Wolfie. And that when I was mentioning earlier about ambition, this is a very ambitious product. And uh, I don't know how much, I don't know if you've watched the video from Ristronica or if you can remember I didn't say about it. No. it. It's called the Wolfy because it combines lo-fi and wi Woefully. <laughs> it's woeful, isn't it? It's, it's a bit woeful. But, yeah, yeah, actually, that's a point. But, um, that's what you were saying. But, <laughs> woeful. They, apart from the synthesizer itself, because it's, it's got this built-in Wi-Fi element, so it can do over-the-air updates, but it also there's... Um, uh, elements of it, you can they're actually breaking out as 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 uh, VST plugins as well. Oh, I see. That's interesting. And um, but you get you get unlimited cloud storage um, for your samples, so you can have all your sample tiny, libraries, oh, okay. and you can bring them in over Wi-Fi. I would be concerned because then, you know, if yeah. it's like, oh, we're not doing it anymore, the server gets turned off. Well, here we go. What, what hasn't that happened recently? What was the thing that? But modal, you know, I mean, obviously they haven't gone anywhere, but the fear was, yeah. Mikey, that means the app and yeah. all of the stuff is right. going to go away. I don't think that's going to be the case. It, no. I think that was a bit of a scare story. I think they'll be back. There's something going on there, but yes. that's a separate issue. A separate issue. But, um, but yeah, so that Wolfie is launching on Kickstarter on October the 17th. My instinct is that it's going to be a very successful um, Kickstarter because in many ways, it's quite similar to the Chompy. They, they share quite a few things in... The, yeah, they, well, well, that did millions, didn't it? It did incredibly well on Kickstarter. So whether the message will get out enough about the, about the Wolfie, but, but I haven't had a look through it and, um, and an ex exploration of it. I'm certainly very, very interested. And it's gonna, it's Kickstarter price. I think it's gonna be 599 and it's, Retail price, I think, is slated to be around 800. Right, so Kickstarter's a deal, isn't it? Yeah, but I mean, 30 40 percent. Yeah, but I feel that in terms of what it is, that I think that 600 price point feels really good. You know, it feels really, really good. Um, I, I think that's uh, uh, that price point there. If you think about what's in that price, point, yeah, there's a lot of things around the six to eight hundred. Yeah, like so the Roland SH4D. Or the Gaia 2. The Gaia 2, which I think there's a, a couple of hundred between those two, isn't there? But, um, or 150, but it, it, same sort of ballpark. But Korg's Wave, well, Korg's uh, Mini Log XD, but also, uh, how much, I think the, the, the Wave States and the, yeah, and the, the Op 6 is six 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 the same sort of kind yeah. of price point, really. But that price point's been a bit barren, hasn't it? And actually, the price point up to around a thousand, if you think about a thousand pounds, what synth costs a thousand pounds? Maybe the, is the the grandmother is that the one there? Or something? It was no, about eleven hundred. Okay. Yeah, it yeah. went up. Yeah, they had they 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 went up. Oh, they they went um, oh, yeah, it is. You know what? I'm going to call um, time. We've got three minutes left on the card. Okay. Well, so nice thank you for watching <laughs> this experiment. It may, none of it may have worked. Yeah. And this may be all fatuous and empty, but thank you very much for watching. 
Uh, that was, uh, we don't know what we're going to call this yet, but it's stuck in a car with Nick, Gaz and Jason. <laughs> yeah. How about that? Cheers, guys. Cheers.